Good morning. Say good morning. Good morning. <laughs> I'm very happy to be here. I'm Milton Chang. Um, looking at all these, uh, all you young faces, uh, reminds me of 40 years ago uh, when I was a student and uh, beginning to get active in the uh, professional societies. It's really great. It's been a uh, wonderful career. So this morning, I'd like to share with you uh, some of the insights in terms of a possible career, or at least give yourself, give yourself an, the option to start a company someday if you ever want to. So it's, you know, when I was young, I wanted to make a name in technology, and of course, I uh, went to the dark side. And you might think about that, but at least it gives you the option. So that's what I'll be talking about today. So, um, you know, all, you have heard about all of the uh, trials and tribulations of starting a company, but most of us think of starting a company as to have a great idea, uh, raise a lot of money, get going, and then IPO, and happily ever after. And uh, the reality is that that's probably not the way you're going to start, at least in the beginning, um, because if you do... Um, recently, I, uh, a couple of days ago, I was writing this article for Photonic Spectra, and I decided to go on Google and I type in um, get VC money or something to that effect, and pops up this little six-minute video and basically said that uh, a typical VC firm sees 1,000 business plans a year, and out of that, they fund 10 businesses, and as a statistics, about 30% of the companies they fund succeed. So that works out to be 0.2 to 0.4% of all of the uh, business plan that's written. So, you know, somebody spent quality time to do it, will ever get funded. So it's a fairly low probability that you're going to come across that without having uh, some uh, business or work career uh, experience behind you. But so it's a, it's a, it's a matter of um, your own personal risk profile. Uh, you you want to give it a try, you might make it. But today I would like to tell you a little bit about what I did, and it was uh, much more lower risk. Actually, you know, starting businesses is not a highly risky proposition, as you hear. And the reason why the statistics are so dismal is because people are very ill-prepared. So to speak, they have no business start to start a business, and that's why they fail. So if you're well prepared, using the right approach, you actually can significantly improve the odds, and that's what I did as a young man. So I'll tell you a little bit about my experience, and if I were your age and starting off, what would I do differently, which is something that you may want to think about. And I provide you kind of a couple examples, a typical what I hear about, you know, people write to me about my columns and uh, how you might start your own business. And then a few take-home messages to remember, in, you know, keep it in the back of your head that you may become useful someday. I came from Hong Kong, uh, spoke not very good English, and went to, eventually went to University of Illinois and finished up. I worked my way through college, and I worked, uh, was very fortunate to work in a microwave lab, and I built a laser, a ruby laser, 1964. So that was uh, very lucky to, be, to get this kind of hands-on experience uh, working my way through college. Then I went to Caltech for my graduate school, and there actually is where I uh, really uh, got the idea of business because the economics professor, uh, Professor Gilbert, basically said, you know, if you have uh, great technology, if you want to benefit mankind, you really eventually had to commercialize, or somebody has to commercialize us. So business was not all bad. As a young man, I was very idealistic, kind of thinking business is bad. And then I went to um, work for two, uh, in, at an aerospace company. It was very difficult to find jobs at the time, uh, 1969. But I was able to, through my professor, I was able to land a good job. But I really didn't like my work, because I, I couldn't quite see where my work was going. So I think, I think there, I think you really got to trust your intuition and, you know, go with it. Uh, you can't just sort of like, oh, well, you know, it's a living, or, you know, I'll do it. You know, you got to be true to yourself. And so I was ready to do anything to do what I like. 
And I got a call from my uh, schoolmate uh, one year ahead of me, John Matthews uh, at Caltech, and he asked me to join a startup company called Newport, which uh, many of you buy, his, uh, buy the uh, products today. And I said, no, you know, I um, really prefer not to do engineering, uh, but um, to, to get, uh, get on the business side. And he said, great, so I can focus on products and you can do the, the marketing. So I was a seventh employee, a seventh and no business experience, and I was given the title of VP Marketing because it's a small company. And to make a long story short, uh, John eventually, after three, uh, maybe five years or so, he uh, left to start another company, which I was also involved a little bit. And the deal was that he runs the other company I, and I ran Newport. So I became the president and took it public. And that was 17 years, so nothing was quick. Uh, and the start was very slow because uh, everything was by trial and error learning and then eventually took off and it's the Newport today. And I left about 17 years later and uh, uh, decided to come to the Bay Area to become a VC uh, in a sense to do more of the angel investment because what I was running Newport, I did a lot of angel investment, in fact, maybe uh, 10 of them or so. And all of them were successful and I thought, wow, you know, I can do this. So, but it was really much better, uh, the um, entrepreneurial environment was much better in the Silicon Valley. So I actually commuted 10 years uh, to come up here to start companies. And I started two, and that took, went public, that's Eurydex and Euphonics. And then I got a little itchy and I started a new focus and tried uh, to do uh, really a little bit differently. I didn't want to have a frontal competition. So it's much more focused on uh, instrumentation, you know, because in some sense I knew everybody at Newport, I didn't want to be sort of turning my back on them. Of course, there's some overlap, but by and large, it's more instrument and really focus on doing things differently. In fact, our logo, our uh, tagline was um, simply better. We, we wanted to do everything better, and that strategy basically works in our industry. If you want to do something, you've got to do it better. And then the, uh, the telecom bubble came, and I, uh, New Focus also went public. Uh, I had a vi uh, president running it, so I uh, uh, decided to... Uh, uh, start a VC fund uh, in Cubic, and there uh, I had less success, but I'll tell you a little bit more about it later. But altogether, I had to date uh, seven IPOs and five acquisitions, and it's been a really a wonderful experience. And here's someone that really had no money, um, no business experience, uh, but you, you know, I did it. And it was, uh, I have to admit, it was easier in those days, uh, but still you need one success and typically, the smaller is your objective, or more finite is your objective, or more realistic is your objective, the more likely you're going to succeed. And then with that one success, that differentiates you from everybody or the wannabes, and then you have a lot more opportunity to go on much further.